Authorities and their explanation right here tonight. More than a hundred people have died here, and there are more than a thousand still unaccounted for. And tonight, the Red Cross, just before we came on the air here, has now declared this disaster a mass fatality operation as they carefully search through the debris for remains, asking loved ones to please provide their DNA. We traveled into Lahaina today with those two captains, taking the same route in that they took the night of the fires, jumping into action when the Coast Guard said, we need help. Tonight, for the first time, we see the images of the fires that they captured themselves, those captains, the fires raging, the blinding smoke in the harbor, the heat they felt when they arrived, asking themselves, how would anyone survive jumping into those churning waters in those winds? Tonight here, some of the evidence, the surveillance, video of that spark, a flash, a downed power line, what could be the earliest reported fire on Maui. Soon, homes and neighborhoods fully engulfed, people desperately trying to get away, the families trapped in their cars, the historic front street of Lahaina within hours going up in flames. And as you know, so many people jumping over the seawall, clinging to the rocks at the edge of the water, some in that water for hours. That stretch of front street after the fire, frozen in place, burned, the charred, hollowed out frames of the buildings that once stood there. The grim search now for days here, cadaver dogs leading the way. And we have been told they are now setting up screens here across Maui in Lahaina to give search teams the privacy they need with this crucial work. Tonight here, those brave captains, what they witnessed, what they did. There are so many heroes here. And tonight, there are also so many questions. Could more have been done by the authorities? Tonight, the images we have not seen before, the raging inferno in the distance. These are the images captured by two captains as they made their way into Lahaina from the water. Told by the Coast Guard, people were desperate for help, families trapped at the water's edge. So many jumping in, children among them, waiting in the angry waters for hours, the ocean churning from the winds, all to escape the flames racing down the hill, some of those flames traveling a mile a minute. Tonight, for the first time, we take that journey back with those captains traveling along Maui's western edge. Just a haunting scene here, all along Front Street, where so many families and, and the people of Lahaina came down the hill to try to escape the flames uh, and the heat. So many jumping in the water here uh, just to survive. As the two captains got closer to the harbor after nightfall, they could feel the heat, the blinding smoke. We've all seen the images of the, of the people who jumped in the water just, just to survive this, uh, who were huddled along Front Street here. We were expecting the worst on the way in, so we had, we had big spotlights up here, flashlights searching. It was There was so much smoke in the air, your flashlight beam would only go about a hundred feet or so. As we look at it here, you can see that people had no place to go other than the water or the one road out of town. Yeah. I mean, they were trapped. Sorry, sorry. It is still too raw. Captain Riley Coons is a third generation Hawaiian, and Captain Travis DeWater, they were both there that night. Well, it looked like a zombie apocalypse. Everything was on fire. Uh, everybody was just covered in soot. Their faces were covered in, in, in soot from the fire. Yeah. There, I mean, everything. Everything. Everybody was kind of covered in, in soot. So many people who were actually even in the water were holding like a t-shirt up to their face just to breathe through it. But the best I could tell, there was a girl that was nine and a boy that was like 11 or 12. Um, <clears throat> They were pretty scared, showed up out of the dark and took them, took them paddling out through the waves. Uh, who I think was a young boy, the older one was encouraging his sister uh, to be strong and it was pretty touching. When you look at these charred buildings and the melted cars all along Front Street, I mean, it's as though these families just, they got trapped. When you think about the, the people still unaccounted for here, This is just one of the heaviest um, thoughts to think about. I know that there's, um, I, I got three young kids, and I just imagine, well, what would it, I'm just a fake file, you know, I wasn't in here. Uh, there's stories that people would just see um, families huddled together, and they said it looks like it's Pompeii. They're just calcified. 
frozen at the time. And then when I heard that, because <clears throat> the uh, schools were in that day, it was so windy that a lot of these were for children. <laughs> at home. of that night, the families, parents, and their children in their cars, hope they won't forget. Tonight, how did this happen? It was more than a week ago, Monday evening, August 7th, 10.47 p.m., a surveillance camera capturing this moment, a flash, video of what could have been an early trigger in these deadly fires, a power line arcing. Witness Jennifer Pribble. It's windy, and then there's a flash, and I think that's when a tree's falling on a power line to the power goes out, the camera comes back online, and then the forest is on fire. The data compiled by Whisker Labs, a private company monitoring the grid through a network of sensors here, documenting dozens of major electrical incidents around Lahaina. We've got that video of that kind of explosion, and we've got 10 sensors in that community that show a very sharp drop in electrical voltage at precisely that same time. You can see Jennifer and a co-worker running with a garden hose and a fire extinguisher, trying to put out the flames. It was just minutes earlier, 6.37 a.m., Shane True, woken up by the howling winds. Freaking power line just went down. In that moment, using a hose to try to protect his home from the fires that he says appears to have been caused by a down power line. That's the power line that started. Started from up the road there. All of that is still burning. You get all this wind blowing and now you get a fire and just that was fuel and just in a matter of minutes that whole place was just engulfed. Tonight, demand for accountability and serious questions about whether alerts were sent when they should have been and whether sirens should have been sounded. It was around midnight that night. Those two captains, Riley and Travis, arrive in that harbor, only to find the raging fires and the blinding smoke. A week later, they're aware they were not the only ones who raced into help. A lot of people here did a lot of heroic work. The community has been amazing on the response side. It, I mean, there was other boats out here that night. We're not the only ones. Yeah, that was one of the most amazing things out of this is to watch how fast uh, the com community came together and rose up. And yeah. It was instant, and it was everybody. I think the whole country is thinking about the people of Lahaina and Maui, and we've got to do something to honor all these families here. I hope so. You know, those two captains telling me that that young brother and sister have been reunited with their parents. The parents were found down the way on Front Street from where the children were found in those nighttime hours. These two captains bravely sharing their stories with us today and over and over again telling me that there have been so many heroes here. And we told them the country knows that. Later tonight, right here.